Aloha and uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. I want to talk about inflammation and uh, an experience I just recently had here on the island of Hawaii. Um, about two weeks ago my leg uh, swole up. There was a large amount of um, mucus surrounding the knee and I noticed the mucus was building up. You could see it starting to come through the skin. There were like patches of skin that clearly had mucus under there. I didn't treat it immediately, unfortunately, and uh, what ended up happening was I got severe inflammation around the knee, which uh, swelled up, and there was um, a lot of pus, and uh, my mobility in the knee, the flexibility in the knee, started going away. Um, this is about two weeks ago. Now, why this happened, I'm not entirely sure, but just to give some potential reasons, um, I just had come off of a 21-day juice fast. A lot of coconut water and juice um, you know toxins could have been coming out of the body during that time and when I broke the fast maybe the toxins hadn't completely flushed themselves out and they uh, placed themselves back into a part of the body and then the body you know tried to isolate it in that one area which was the knee uh, another reason could have been while I was fasting I had started Bikram yoga which is a very intense uh, form of heat yoga if you don't know what that is and that might not have been the best idea. I mean, I felt great. It felt great, but it was detoxing every time I did the yoga on top of the 21 day fast of detoxing and doing a lot of the coconut water, which was flushing out of toxins out. Um, so that could have been uh, an issue. Uh, one thing that I did not do during the fast, which uh, I should have been doing, was out of the 21 days, I didn't start flushing the colon uh, with enemas until about day 9, day 10, and that could have triggered some toxins, you know, as the body stops eating and things start shutting down, things could have been bleeding into the system. Um, so anyway, what happened was my leg uh, swole up, felt like there was a fever, I mean, it was a severe inflammation, and uh, I knew that at a certain point I had to stop going to work and deal with this. Now, I'm not a medical professional. I can't give advice for any type of ailment you may have. This is not intended for medical advice by any means. This is just my experience and what happened to me, and I'm just talking on my YouTube channel. Uh, but for me, I didn't want to go to the hospital. I wanted to treat this with natural remedies. So what I did was I took um, a needle, sterilized it. It was very important. Uh, to me that everything was sterile in this entire process of healing uh, So I, I took a needle lit the end with fire and then when um, it cooled down sprayed it with hydrogen peroxide And I lanced the area with pus on the knee that looked like it had the most pus and then um, through massaging uh, I was able to Encourage some of the pus to come out of the hole not much came out the first time um, and there was a lot. I knew it wasn't going to come out in the first day. I knew it was going to be a process. Uh, but I got a good amount of pus out. But I think, you know, I pressed too hard that first time trying to get it out of that tiny hole. And what ended up happening was there was some bruising around the area now. And it was very sensitive. And I lost my ability to walk. Uh, which didn't come back for about a week. It was very sore to walk on the leg after my first, you know, try getting the pus out. And, and it swelled up even greater which um, created a little bit of concern. But I was here with a friend who was able to uh, help me get through it, gave love, support, and encouragement, which was necessary for me to stay out of the hospital because I really, really, really didn't want to go to the hospital. I wanted to do this naturally. Uh, and she was a great help. You know, she, she helped massage the leg, which is good for inflammation. Um, we used cayenne oil. And uh, it was just, you know, the essential oil, cayenne, mixed with some coconut oil. And we massaged the area because massaging is very good for inflammation. And I took some notes of things that I did. I'm just going to read a couple of things off. Things that are good for inflammation. Um, cayenne pepper is great. Uh, that was the number one herb I used uh, for inflammation. It gets the blood flowing. It lowers inflammation. Actually, I'm going to read a couple of things that cayenne is good for. Um, it has anti-irritant properties, it has anti-cold and, and flu agent properties, anti-fungal properties, migraine headache prevention, anti-allergen, it's a digestive aid, anti-retinous properties, 
helps produce saliva, which is great for digestion. It's useful for blood clots. It uh, detoxes the system, which is highly important if you're accumulating mucus. You need to detox the system because the mucus is being caused by some toxin in the body. Um, it's a joint pain reliever, antibacterial properties, possible anti-cancer agent, supports weight loss, promotes heart health, remedy for toothache, and uh, topical remedy. And it's also loaded with vitamin C, B6, niacan, riboflavin, vitamin A, iron, copper, and potassium, and uh, capsin, which uh, laboratory results are suggesting that it has antibacterial, anti-carcinogen, and anti-diabetic properties, also found to lower cholesterol levels. Cayenne is a great pepper. It's, it's phenomenal. It's super easy to grow. I've grown it before. Just bought a little baby plant, stuck it in the ground, watered it, gave it sun. It did everything else. But it's, it's, it's a miracle food. Um, it really helped get my, my system clean. And it was one of the number one things I used during this process. Uh, another thing that I use, and I actually learned about it. I've been using aloe vera my whole life. But what was beneficial about using it for the inflammation and the pus was that not only does it reduce inflammation, but I didn't know this, it actually pulls mucus out of the body so severely, in fact, that I took a little needle, stuck it into my leg, and then what I did was I just ever so lightly heated the back of aloe vera, you know, pulled one end off so the gel was exposed on one end, but the skin was on the other end, and that skin side, we heated it uh, just a little bit, and then we put turmeric, uh, vitamin E, and ignasia on the gel side. And then we put that, because those are good for inflammation as well, we put that on top of the, where I lanced it with the needle, tiny little pinprick. And uh, in one night, with the Band-Aid over the aloe vera and just that on there, that little hole opened up. Not to the point, actually it, it did, it, it kind of threw me off guard. I didn't think it was gonna open up that much. But it opened it up because it knew that the body needed to relieve this pus. So when that opening happened, I was able to squeeze mucus out daily, 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 keeping the wound very clean, using a lot of hydrogen peroxide, a lot of cotton swabs, a lot of bandages. Gobs of mucus came out. I'm talking, it, it was, uh, edu it was, it was in interesting to see the process of getting this out. It was very disgusting at the same time because like literally I would have bags full of pus coming out of my leg. Um, the first couple of days, it would just come out in the drops, you know, and, but um, kept putting the aloe vera on there and the, the hole stayed there for the first week and just kept squeezing it out, you know, two to three times a day because you have to get the mucus out. You have to get it out to reduce the inflammation. Uh, so that's a very important process in healing. If you have mucus, that's going to create inflammation. Inflammation is going to create disease. You have to treat that. Um, Speaking of which, to, you want to get off of uh, anything that's going to create mucus while you're trying to cure inflammation because if you have inflammation, it is a mucus problem. So you have to get on a mucus-free diet. Uh, what I did was um, all raw foods because I just got off the fast anyway. I wanted to transition into eating. I was doing raw foods anyway, so I wasn't creating more mucus in the body. Um, you know, gluten is going to create mucus, you know, white flowers are going to create mucus, dairy obviously is going to create mucus, meat will create mucus. You want to get on a mucusless diet. Um, raw foods, fruits and veggies are great, um, you know, nuts and seeds if that's what you do. Um, just because you don't want to create anything that's going to harm the healing process if you want to do this naturally. Um, no sugars, you know, sugars are going to hurt uh, the healing process in all forms of healing. Okay, so I was squeezing the mucus out daily, daily, daily. Other herbs that I was using and I was taking in tea form were golden seal and echinacea, which is great for inflammation. That's a powerhouse too. I would highly recommend looking up the benefits of echinacea and golden seal as a combination. Um, turmeric, I put turmeric on uh, all the food I was eating. I put it in my teas. Ginger, which not only helped inflammation, but it's also a pain reliever. Uh, it's a natural way to relieve pain because it was excruciating the first couple of days, pushing this area that was very sensitive and sore to get the pus out. Um, and, and part of that took away my ability to walk. Um, black strap molasses helps reduce inflammation and provides the body with a lot of nutrients that you need for healing, as well as apple cider vinegar and uh, aloe vera. And uh, 
one of the number one things to reduce inflammation, and if you're in a healing process yourself, is drink plenty of water, lemon water if you can. That's going to alkaline the water and provide uh, the necessary minerals that are stripped out if you're drinking distilled water. Okay, so the wound opened up with the aloe vera. I was able to squeeze it out, was icing it occasionally, trying to get the inflammation down. It stayed that way for a week. I didn't know if it was or wasn't healing, but the body was smart enough to heal itself, and if you're putting in the right things, it does come around. So after the first week, you could clearly see that um, it was healing. Uh, started trying to bend it. It wouldn't bend all the way, the knee itself. Trying to walk on it, I was still hobbling about, but the first week I was able to walk. But then what I noticed what happened was uh, edema started gathering around my ankle and my, uh, my foot. My foot swole up drastically. Uh, my leg was swollen drastically, the knee was swollen drastically, the thigh was swollen drastically. It was about three, two or three times the size of the other leg, and you can clearly see that there was something going on. So what I did at that point with the swelling, and, and you should do this if, if you have inflammation or anything of the leg, is you want to elevate it above the heart level. So I elevated the leg, that brought the swelling down almost in a day. Um, just kept the leg elevated uh, every day, every day, every day. Um, and uh, that helped with the swelling. I took some diuretics to help get some of the water out because there was clearly water in the foot. Um, cranberry juice is a great one if you can find it without sugar, non-concentrate, organic cranberry juice without any sugar, uh, go for that. Um, another diuretic that I use, because cranberry juice can be very expensive, it's just black tea. Black tea kept me um, moving and that helped with the edema. And for those of you who don't know, edema just means swelling. When it swells up, that's edema. Um, okay, so what happened after uh, I got a lot of the pus out is the aloe vera that created the hole, the same aloe vera, and this is when I knew that the healing process was finally coming to a close, was that now that the aloe vera that opened that hole up started closing the hole. And this is the intelligence of the plant and the intelligence of the body working together in unison. Now that the hole was closing up, I'd, I'd, it, it, at first it made me concerned because I was like, oh, I want to keep getting the mucus, I don't want to keep getting the pus out. But then when I inspected it, I realized there's not really much mucus or pus in there. There was a little bit in there, but the body knew that it was time to heal that wound because there was a big hole in my leg and uh, it closed it up. And after that, I still just rested. Um, and a lot of the mucus just, you know, the body started flushing it out and started eating it away naturally. Uh, so all in all, it took about two weeks from me not being able to walk to me being able to walk without noticing anything, without hobbling, without any pain. Uh, fortunately, you know, I, I'm self-employed, so I was able to take the time off without um, having any stress. Being in a stress-free environment is key for healing. You don't want to be anywhere where you have to worry about anything if possible. Uh, support of loved ones is significant. So many people told me you have to go to the hospital, you have to go to the hospital. It was like a broken record, da 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 But I had one friend here who was loving and supporting and knew a lot of herbology and, and you know, healing arts who said, you know, we don't have to go to the hospital, we can do this. And that meant the world to me. Uh, so if you have um, a support system, definitely use that when you're healing. If you know someone else who's healing, definitely support them because that's what's going to help us heal ourselves as a people if we can connect and, and know that if something happens, someone's got your back. Um, definitely a learning experience. Definitely allowed me an opportunity to trust the body because the body always wants to heal itself. It's always doing everything it can to heal itself. And just watching that process, nature takes time. You know, if you don't get the result you want in the first day, don't give up because the body will try to heal itself. You just got to hit it with everything that it needs, build it back up so it can heal itself, create an environment where healing is possible. If you're drinking liquor, smoking, eating meat, processed foods, dairy, you're destroying your inner environment and creating an acidic uh, composition which is going to hinder healing and create problems for you down the long run. Um, get plenty of rest, plenty of water, sunlight. If you can get out in the sun, I couldn't get out in the sun for the first couple of days and that was lowering my energy and spirits. But then I, you know, just even a little bit in the window that I had here, because uh, this is where I was resting, that helped getting outside, getting sun, brings the spirits up. And then just do things that are light, you know, do things that make you happy, draw, write some poetry, Watch a funny movie. Keep your spirits high. Just understand that this is part of, you know, being a human and part of healing is just 
time it takes time um, so I think that's everything uh, again cayenne pepper was great Olivera was great Olivera pulls pus out if you have inflammation um, keep your leg elevated drink plenty of water if it's a leg or arm or whatever it is just try to keep fluids going back to the central core of your body uh, if it's an extremity that you have the issue and uh, just know that everything is possible you you have the capability to heal yourself you don't need medicines because medicines from the pharmaceutical company uh, are not designed to heal in my experience I'm not going to say that you need to get off your medicine I'm not giving any medical advice but in my experience I noticed that for me uh, they were only suppressing my symptoms they didn't cure my ailments uh, so things to consider much love 13 love